video I want to give a very high overview of docker tags. Now docker tags are very similar to git branches and git commits in that the branch methodology you can use with git is really open to interpretation and each team might have a different way of managing git. Um, over time uh, git flow has been introduced and people seem to like that approach but it doesn't mean that you have to do it and development uat kanban and, and master branches are all just names and it just so happens to be that once you make a git repository um, you get a master branch now why am i saying this i'm talking about docker well the reason being is that when we have a local repository and you make a, a new uh, build what will happen is it will automatically get tagged with the word latest so you might have an image the thing to remember is that that tag called latest it actually points to an image and the image might have a reference number in this case i've just made it up as af4 in reality they're much longer and they're a unique image that says that this is what this collection of files looks like so if you were to create uh, a new image and not change any files you would actually get the exact same reference because it re requests the same image type. If you change a file and rebuild, you'll get a new image. And as you're building, then latest will be updated and the hash will keep on changing. Now, for that reason, uh, using latest is considered an anti pattern and it can be quite dangerous because you can accidentally push things to production. But whilst you're building, this, this is what you're going to get. So say, for instance, you want to make a, a release and what we want to do is make an actual UAT release. Well, what we can do is create a new tag uh, by doing a Docker tag, uh, my app latest, my app UAT, and it will make a, a UAT tag for me, which means that they'll both be pointing to the same image. We can then take this uh, tag along with its image and push it up to the Azure repository. And what we would like to say is, right, okay, let's create a new web app and let's map it. So let's move this to the top so it's closer to where things are being done. So we've got a new image here and we've got the tag which points to that image. And then we're saying, let's create a new app and let's point to that tag. So at that point, they're all pointing to the same image. They've all got the same hash. So we've got our latest, our UAT, the pushed up UAT, and then this app that's changed. So we want to do a release build now. Now it's quite common for people to link the, the, the release um, to this release tag, this UAT tag. The problem is, is that when it, this tag mutates, uh, it can point to a different image. So if we make this point to a different image, we can accidentally update UAT and production at the same time, which is why a lot of people uh, run foul of this. So what we want to do is create a new release tag. And this release tag, as you've probably guessed already, will have the same image as its reference. So we take this release image and this release tag and we push it up. Now you'll notice something really cool here is that when you push this release tag up, it will take milliseconds to it pushed up to Azure because it'll realize it's pointing to the same image and it already has the image stored in its database. All we're doing is saying create a new tag. So at that point, we create our live application. We make the live application point to a released release XXX, whatever, you, uh, whatever your team feels is the most logical name for me released feels right but it can be whatever your team decides and now all systems are pointing to the same image we have our latest which we did the build from then we created a uat and it's got the same image we pushed that up we mapped a new app to it we then created our release tag which points to the same image push that tag up no work to be done because of the image already exists created the new app and pointed that at released and now they've all got the same hash so what we do now is we start doing some work and we start playing about and we will do a change and the change will give us a new image so latest will now point to that image notice nothing else has changed as we do docker build latest will just keep on changing locally 
but it won't change anywhere else. At that point, we can want to, uh, once we've tested this locally, we will create and update the UAT image, uh, the UAT tag, sorry. And the UAT tag will then point to this new image. Once we're happy, we can push this up and we can say, right, get this image that's now linked to UAT and push up. And it will push up the new image on to the Azure system. But notice that uh, the UAT app is still pointing to the old AF4, which is fine. So now that's pointing there, eventually what will happen is uh, a webhook will call, as you will be told that this image is updated, and then via CI, this image will get pushed into here, the app will restart, and we'll be using the new version of the site. So that's great. Notice it's not been released yet. Once we've tested it in UAT, we're happy. And as you've probably guessed, the goal now is to update the released tag so that the release tag now points to this image instead of the previous one. Once that's done, we then push up the release tag to Azure. Luckily, it pushes up the tag and it goes, let's look at the image. Oh, I've got that image already. And you should see no changes. Um, it should be instant. If you say uh, image changed, or if you see in the console that the image has changed, or there's a difference, stop. There's a problem, there's a smell there. That shouldn't happen because it's already got it. So now we've got released updated to point to this same image. We can take that and continuous integration will eventually update this version. And now we're all singing from the same hymn sheet and we're all on the same uh, version. This is great, but there's a slight problem to this in that if we need to revert back, there's no way of reverting back. We've lost completely the previous version, which is a problem because if we need to roll back, we actually have no way of rolling back because all of these images are actually uh, the same. There's, there's only one image now, just multiple tags pointing to the same one. So the convention then is to um, give things an actual uh, version number once you've pushed up to production. So once you've pushed up to production, what you should do is create a new tag. And in this scenario, uh, the tag would have been this image. And we push up this tag then to Azure. So now, should we want to, should we need to, we have the ability to roll back. We can say, oops, something's gone wrong. Let's roll back to version one, which we, you, we knew was a working version. We can do that. We roll back to version one. We can then fix the problem by creating it locally and fixing it with latest, then putting it into UAT, and then pushing that up and then pushing that into UAT. If that works, then what we do is we create a new version, a new tag. It is mapped to that image and we push that up. And that goes in to our repository. And notice as we push up, we've already got that, so we're okay. So what we can then do is we can say, right, let's, now we're happy with that, let's make the release version the same, point to the same image. So we change that locally, then we push that up and release changes, and then continuous integration will grab that and update that image, and we've released it. So that's the basic convention, that's how it works. Um, that's an idea of how it can work. This is basically up to interpretation. We're able to change this and make it work for each team. So the naming conventions, the way you decide to do it, it's all up to you. Once you've got this fixed and it's a known process that's the same all the time, 
then it's time to start putting that into Team City and taking the legwork out of it. No one wants to be doing this by hand. No one should be doing this by hand. 